What's up scavengers and welcome back to Ant Scandinavia. It has been a while since I uploaded and I'm so happy to finally give you guys this video. Hope you enjoy. Today we're going to make an island style formicarium. The key feature of this style of a formicarium is that you're using water as a barrier for the ants. Knowing this, this setup only works on non-swimming ants as well as smaller species, since larger species might be able to escape pretty easily uh, and the swimming ants, well, <laughs> they will swim over. <laughs> That being said, this setup is perfect for tiny species and or species that can climb on a lot of barriers, Pagulepis for example, because they will not be able to cross water. I, however, will have a Temnothorax colony in this setup. So let's get to building this awesome island formicarium. I will utilize this, a broken oversized wine glass that I found at a second hand shop. And note that I have sanded down all the sharp edges of the glass. To hold the water, I'm using this large petri dish that I got from my awesome chemistry teacher. The idea is pretty simple. The ants will be on the island, aka the wine glass in this case, and the wine glass will stand inside the petri dish that will hold the water, making an uncrossable barrier for little Temnothorax ants. This open style formicarium is really eye-pleasing, as it lets you see the ants at your eye level without any glass blocking the view. So, as you guys know, any setup with dirt, a drainage layer is needed for excess water to be collected in. For this setup, clay balls would be far too large, so I use perlite. I then put down a cloth to separate it from the dirt layer. Then it's dirt mixing time. I use my normal dirt mix made from potting soil, leaf litter and some sphagnum moss. Then I went on to add sand. This is since I will have a succulent plant in the setup, who doesn't like moist soil. Adding sand helps aerate the soil and create air pockets. Adding the soil, I recommend making a hard bottom layer, making the rest of the soil setup more sturdy. It is also good for new setups since the soil often is very soft and uncompacted. I then went on to planting. This is a small jade plant that will be perfect for this setup. It grows slow and can tolerate dry soil. I moistened the dirt a little more and added a moss patch. This moss is on top of a wood piece, perfect for the Temnothorax to nest in. I decided to dig it down a little bit, so that it holds moisture better. I then went on to placing out some larger rocks. This is to create a more sturdy soil, as well as good nesting places for the ants. I then placed in an old looking root structure that I found on a mountain in Spain. I can for sure say that I love the old, twisted and bent look on these awesome roots. Adding a root structure like this helps provide adequate nesting spots for the ants as well. So it's a win-win, cool to look at and good for the ants. I felt like the scape needed some more plants, but not two large ones. Luckily I had this guy standing around. This will be perfect as ground foliage, as it is a dry loving plant, which doesn't grow very big. I chose not to include too big of a piece, since I didn't really know how fast it grew, plus I didn't really know if it will survive either. As of making this voice recording, that plant has actually died and I have replaced it with new smaller succulent plants. And voila, a minimal island formicarium. I add some small ferns into the moss, though chances were that they would dry out, and after a day or two they did, but they at least looked cool while they lasted. I then proceeded making the water part. I didn't like the sterile look of the glass, so I added some sand. This created a lot of floating sand particles, and I then used a brush to get rid of them, stirring them down. Looking back, I could have skipped the sand, since it created unnecessary areas for bacteria to grow, and now I have a bacteria film on the water, so I will actually remove the sand soon. But it looks much better aesthetically, if you are okay with cleaning the water surface. I then went on to sprinkle some sand and leaf litter on the island, giving it some more texture, and after that, it was finished. Look. 
looks pretty neat, huh? I think so. Now, the main attraction, the ants. For such a small formicarium, I felt like there were not really any species rather than Temnothorax that would suit. So, I therefore introduced some Temnos. The exact species is still unknown. Me and the Aphenogaster really tried to get a species ID on them, but didn't succeed. Check his Instagram out, really cool dude who knows a lot about ants. Either way, we were absolutely sure that they were in the genus of Temnothorax at least. And that's enough info to put them in a setup like this. I had previously had this colony in a closed container, with minimal air ventilation, since they could climb on all barriers I tried. This created very stale air, something that you want to avoid if you can. All these white small dots you see crawling around are mites, though they are just harmless ground mites luckily. I placed the test tube here, since I wanted to get some airflow inside to try to get rid of the mites. I chose not to cover the test tubes to encourage them to move, but even now, two weeks later, they have still not moved sadly. I fed them some honey, and they really seem to like it. Just some minutes after I had added them in, they were out and exploring. Some were more daring than others, walking right on the edge. The day after, I came back to check on them, but to my surprise, I found quite a few of dead ants in the water. Damn it, perhaps this was not such a smart idea at all. I decided to put some more rocks up against the glass, so that if they fell down whilst taking a drink or whatever, they would be able to climb up the rocks and back. I also made sure to cut down the succulent plant leaves, since much of them were hanging over the edge. And that seemed to be the problem, because since I did this, the water casualties has dropped dramatically. I still find one or two every week or so, but I guess that is just some sort of population control, so no big deal. Well, there you have it, an island formicarium for your ants. I must say that this formicarium style is awesome. It gets you eye to eye level with the ants, without any barrier to separate you. It's truly an awesome build you should definitely try out. Remember that you can use whatever you want as an island. It can be as simple as a bowl and a deeper plate as the water barrier, or a larger box in a tray. Depends on what you want. So go loose building these, it's super fun. And be sure to DM me your results on Instagram, at ants underscore Scandinavia. I'm really curious to see what you have made. Also, I will actually start selling ant quids, beta larvae and some isopods on my Instagram soon as well, if it's not already up whilst you see this. So go check that out if you're interested. Until next time, have a good one scabs. Bye!